You know what gets old too? Your knees, okay? Your lashes and your knees. Hey guys, Janelle from Lash Affair. Today we're gonna talk about DIY lashes and DIY is do it yourself for all of you weirdos that don't craft at home. So, and I'm just kidding. So, the main thing I want to get across here first and foremost is that it, it's the DIY concept is not the problem, it's just what is being advertised as DIY. Then we're gonna get really um, granular about that. So, DIY to me is essentially strip lashes or cluster lashes used with a um, latex-based adhesive that's meant for one day use, so not to be worn overnight, basically single-use application. That to me is a DIY. Magnetic lashes are a little bit different because that is essentially you're applying an already made product that's in and of itself, that's totally fine. The product we're gonna talk about today is a product that's being advertised on the market as an at-home lash extension kit, and it actually is being sold as a kit. So what I'm looking at on my screen, we're gonna have pop up um, over here so you guys can see exactly what I'm looking at. So you can follow along this interesting journey. All right, so we're on here. Let's see this product versus Salon Lashes. So right here, as you can see in this little graphic, we have what is a natural lash, which they do love freedom. And I could not agree more with that. We love that. We don't like any weight. We don't like any clumping. All right, so we're gonna go application day. So this patent pending underband technology evenly distributes the weight of the segment on your natural lash. So that is the, the segment is obviously the one single lash. lash. Um, I'm unsure of what an underband technology is. I'm assuming that they're talking about some like reinforced material on the inside of the lash. Um, that to me seems a little suspect due to the fact of how thin the fibers are and what they're made out of. They're made of a PVT plastic, so I'm not sure what would be inside of that reinforcing that would distribute the weight evenly. So that's interesting. Um, right here on this other um, side of the image is supposed to be traditional lash extensions. Um, which is what this graphic is assuming it was a fan. I think that's supposed to be a fan. Yeah, is applied to each natural lash, which um, four to five extensions applied to each natural lash, which is true because some fans can have that many um, extensions in them. That's totally normal. But this part here, it says, this is what causes breakage between natural lashes at the root due to uneven weight distribution and can ultimately leave lasting damage. So. Um, that's kind of a, an interesting statement because if, a, if a, a fan is created by a lash artist and it is made with the proper amount of adhesive and it's placed clean with you know no other baby lashes touching it and it's a proper weight for that actual lash hair itself, it won't cause damage. What causes damage is that the baby hairs growing around it get caught in the attachment and then that grows out and causes too much weight and it pulls at that. So that's really what's damaging. So that can be a true statement, but it also, I, I just have more questions as to what they mean because the um, diagram doesn't really um, match what they're trying to say. So day five, things are starting to get real. Yeah, things are starting to get real heavy, it looks like over here. So the thing about extensions, you know, DIY lashes, whatever, is that people need to um, remember that they, your lashes continue to grow. So when you get a lash applied by a lash technician, the length you choose might be great for that day, but just remember in a week or so, those are gonna actually get longer as your natural lashes continue to grow. So we always advise to go a little bit on the shorter side, really kind of on the shorter side, not a little, but shorter lashes. Um, due to this fact. So they look great during the first week and then into the second and third week is ideal. So this little graphic is showing that the little natural lash is getting stressed and looks a little angry and the salon extension has either fallen out or some have shown more tension of the root. So I'm assuming that they mean 
the weight is starting to um, settle in. But the, my question is, is these at-home lash extensions are, they come in, in sections or, or well, they're not fans, I'm not gonna call them that because it's not what they are. They're more like cluster lashes. So the before photo of what the kit is, is a single lash. So I'm confused to start. So technically, the at-home lash extensions really look like the picture of the salon lash extension. So it really should be a fan and a fan, really not a single and a fan. So this is really uneven to begin with. Um, but this is correct in saying that it would appear to be a little bit heavier. Um, I don't believe that it would be tension at the root unless it would just be super, super heavy. But in my opinion, the Aquam Lash extensions would actually be um, more of the, the side picture here. So. so day 10, they're claiming that you can see here that the lash has grown out a little bit, but the old natural is holding firm and doesn't appear to be stressed or damaged or having any bad time. Those eyes look quite happy as opposed to this guy on the right who is now crying. So day 10, our lashes have survived all the trials and have kept your natural lashes happy. How so? I'd love a little more information there because technically, the at-home lash extensions, from what I've seen from reviews and some products in person, have a very, very um, wide, large base. And then when you dip them into that adhesive, guess what's gonna get stuck in there and make it even more heavy is that adhesive is gonna wick up there. So this day 10 photo is very confusing to me because it's just, very, it's misleading in my opinion. Um, so to the right it says salon lash extensions have strained your lashes and you're ready to rip them off. Funny that they use that term, ready to rip them off. So if, if you're unfamiliar with how lash extensions work, um, real quickly, a proper lash tag isolates each, each natural hair out so you're only applying to one natural lash. And if they're trained properly, they won't give you lashes that are too heavy for your natural lash to handle. So even after 10 days, you should still have lashes that aren't like hanging down. That's the reason why we say, you know, maybe go a little bit shorter, maybe a little bit um, lighter, you know, maybe lighter fans if you do choose to volume, even mega volume, 0.03 is great. Just make sure you're, you know, not putting these big chunks and having all this heavy, heavy product. So really, at the end of the day, whatever style that you choose, whatever method that you're going for, it's all about weight, weight distribution. And they did talk about that, but it's not in the proper way. So just be aware that um, these at-home lash extensions um, probably will make you want to rip them off after 10 days if the original application wasn't involving any isolation at all. So that means that the lashes were stuck on most likely grabbing um, not only the natural lash that you're intending to put it on, but a whole bunch of them. So the neighboring lashes, including those baby ones that are growing in. Now, if anyone's ever had a single hair ripped out or if you've had lashes before and one of them has ever been stuck, that shit hurts. It throbs, you, you just like, you can feel it. So I'm unclear as to how you could put a full set of these, um, I think they call them chunks, I'll get to that, all on your lash line you know, smearing the glue all over and then expect them not to, as they grow out, pull on those baby hairs, causing them to be heavy and really uncomfortable. So that's interesting to me. So result, oh, this gets good. This gets real good. So this little guy on the left has now grown some muscles. So not only has he survived, but he appears to be stronger than ever. So, so they're ready to go because they're healthy. So ready to go for round two, meaning ready to go for another application or a touch up. It's in a professional setting, um, you know, after a certain amount of weeks, depending how long those natural lash or the extensions have grown out, they're usually removed because they would be um, just really grown out too far from the lid. Meaning if you open your eyes, you'd see that really big gap. So you wanna make sure the lashes are close um, to the lash line. My question here would be ready to go for round two. Now the instructions are to take those off with a professional grade remover, um, which is a, another whole situation that makes me a little nervous because that is a usually an acetone-based product. Now putting that near your eye 
eyes should be a concern in and of itself, let alone doing it to yourself with your eye open, not properly trained. Um, this is why estheticians are, excuse me, yes, a lot of lash artists are estheticians, but this is why lash artists specifically often take multiple trainings. They stay up in their education. Um, they stay up with the times and, and all of the new advances made in the industry. So it's, it's just a lot more difficult to maintain a healthy natural lash line than just popping a product on there. You have to know what you're doing and in order to achieve a natural healthy, healthy lash line over time, you have to make sure that you're treating your lashes respectfully. And that means not just slapping product on, not isolating, using way too long, way too heavy. That's the stuff that will lead to damage. So this little graphic on the right, I'm sorry to laugh, but it's, He's holding on to dear life, what I would think he's swearing, that's what those little lines are. He's just basically saying, I'm, I'm out of here, this isn't working for me. So this is salon lash extensions. Um, your poor lashes have held on for as long as they can, but, they, but they're ready to break free. Now, that bothers me because that's not true. If you go to a trained professional, your lashes should be healthy, they shouldn't be painful, they're not ready to jump ship. Um, and if that is something you've experienced, you can have your lash artist reach out to Lash Affair and get some training because we can help you because that should be what's happening after any period of time. Your lashes shouldn't feel, um, really, your lash extension shouldn't feel like anything. They should feel like your natural lashes and not um, this little painful situation that we're seeing right here. So, that's my problem with this graphic is that it's very misleading and it's, it's very disturbing to me to see that people um, are seeing this content and thinking that they're gonna get this product and it's gonna make their lashes stronger. And as, essentially that's what I gathered from this graphic is that not only are the lashes not gonna be damaged, but they're gonna be stronger than ever. Um, sadly, that probably won't be the case. It is quite difficult to apply extensions. That's why um, lash extensions are such a popular professional service and they've grown in popularity due to the fact that it's such amazing service. So I wanna just um, keep reiterating, like we have to respect this process. It's just like going to a hair salon and if you had a whole group of hairstylists and they were reckless with bleach and they over processed hair and everybody that walked out had white hair or broken hair or damaged hair like that that's a problem to me too so i see it as no different so i just think that there needs to be more conversation going on around this type of marketing um it just makes me upset as a person that is a lash brand owner and you know I just love everything about this industry and it's and I'm not trying to sit here to say you know everybody get lash extensions get them get them get them like they're not for everybody and I can see why some people you know it could be a cost thing it could be a time thing there could be a, a number of reasons why lash extensions aren't for you but I'm here to say this is not for anybody so just do your do your research we are here obviously um, a, a lash affair obviously we have you know, countless num numbers of blogs, we have videos, we have um, an amazing customer care team that if you have any questions about Lash, Lash Health, we're happy to help. So just don't be fooled by these marketing um, ploys to, you know, get your money and run sort of approach to Lash Extension. So um, one more thing I wanna, I'm just gonna keep going through here. Let's go to the application steps. Step one, wash your lashes, put a foamy lash. That's great. We always recommend washing lashes prior to application, so that I'm okay with for sure. Um, step two, give your lashes a squeeze for at least five seconds with the curler. Um, I feel like, um, as a as a make, I have a makeup artist background. Um, I could see why you would tr tr traditionally have somebody curl their lashes and I put mascara on because they can blend well, but. In this instance, if I was, um, I'm taking into consideration, this is recommending curling them before somebody's gonna apply them on themselves. So if you've ever had curled lashes, you know that it's harder to see the base even when you have your eyes closed. So I don't know if that step would be helpful or not. Um, I feel like it might make it a little bit more difficult. Actually, we watched a video, um, somebody did, I forget the gal's name, and we can pop her up. 
right here and she did a full review using these products and I think she actually said that she wished she didn't curl them because it was harder to see and harder to lay the lashes on because at the end of the day um, you're now in charge and you're taking those lashes and you're popping them on so if you have something curled it could potentially get in the way all right so step three all right turn the box step, step four here we go getting into the good stuff Drop two to three dollops of glue into your lash tray, making sure to close your glue when not in use. Yes, so I've looked into this, this glue, and this glue is a cyanoacrylate based adhesive, which is the main ingredient in all professional adhesives, and it is um, extremely temperamental to work with. It dries very, very quickly. It is not intended to touch the skin. It is not intended to be performed with the eye open. So that already is very concerning because your eyes, I mean, it's your eyeball, it's extremely sensitive, it's filled with water. And if you know how professional grade adhesive works, it reacts to water. And I don't know how that would go for somebody if they were trying to place them on and they didn't have a lot of experience. So, um, yeah. Let's go to step five. So grab the lash segment. Ah, it's a segment. Okay. So in this case, we're in professional um, settings, we call them fans. They're handmade or pre-made, but there's no base with a lot of, um, you know, it's like a, almost like a wrap sometimes the cluster lashes have. It doesn't have any of that. So this situation um, does, it has a very thick sort of band at the bottom. So it's, there's a large base. Um, so you grab that up. Don't put the lash hair, the lashes by the hairs to allow the band to be exposed. Okay, so just telling you to grab in the center, which is fine. Dip the bottom side of the lash band in glue, making sure to wipe up any excess along the tray. Okay, but before I go on, I'll just stop there. So, um, the thing with, with lash adhesive is it, is it reacts very fast and it starts to polymerize, meaning it cures fast. So the next, after you dip, the very next surface that you touch, it starts to, to, to bond to. So if you're, um, they used to teach us this technique like 10 years ago in extension courses, they would teach us to dip and then like swipe off and then put place. But the problem is now that that adhesive has already been somewhat like cured and activated and when you go to place it, it's most likely, um, it has that like cured layer on there. So that seems to me like it's also encouraging people to grab an excess amount, which kind of like I explained earlier, if you use an excess amount, it's just gonna get onto the skin and potentially all the lashes around it. So that's interesting. Um, and it goes on to say, let the glue set for five seconds before placing on eyelashes. Now. Any cyanoracolate based adhesive, if it's a quick set one, which it, it probably is based on the all the reaction videos and hearing people talk while they're working with it, that it dries fairly quickly. So we instruct people um, to, to be aware that it has a one to two second dry time. Obviously that depends on your humidity. It's another set of factors that they teach the professionals um, that is a factor. So if you're unaware and you're, try to put these lashes on and your humidity in your room or, or your bathroom or wherever you're kind of trying to get this done is really high, you're gonna to go to dip in place and that glue is, is curing before you could set it onto the lashes. I can actually see this happening. People are gonna get frustrated. They're not gonna understand why they're not sticking, but there's so much more to this product. So this is very, um, it's it's a little dangerous to, to work with products that you just are completely unaware of how they work around your eye area nonetheless. Um, let's go on to step eight. You grab the, the segment, you've dipped, you've dragged it off. Now you're ready to put it in your eye. So working from the outside of your eye in, drag band the glue over lashes before setting and bonding in place over your natural lashes. So again, that's a very um, antiquated technique where we've ruled that out in the professional community because we've had enough data to see what that does to lashes and why it's damaging. Let me explain. So you, if you took that segment, I'm just going to use the term since I'm having fun with it. So you've taken this segment, you 
dip in, you're dragging it off, now you're placing it, and now you're dragging it up. The adhesive up your entire natural lash, which it's telling you to do, and then place. So now you have 75 to 50% of your natural lash adhered to that segment. That is so heavy, and that is going to make your entire lash line so stiff. The, the beautiful thing about lash extensions is that they are like, they are like light as air and they're breathable. Like they move, you can, you know, touch them and they, they move around. They don't feel like this hardened piece of plastic because in a professional setting, we teach people to just dip and place at the very base. So you have one maximum two millimeters of an adhesion point. This will leave your lashes really feeling super natural. So that it right away is is very concerning to me because you know fast forward to say the removal process like how is one going to get all of that off um if you just even just probably touch your lash line i'm assuming that the whole thing would just kind of move together where if you had an extension if you go to touch it one hair should just move so there's a this is really a matter of comfort um obviously always safety but this is trust me is not going to feel good at all if you're just gliding that product on, or sorry, this segment um, onto your lash lashes. Um, oh, ah, uh, ah, uh, we shouldn't read this next sentence. Make sure, and a quote, you see, make sure your natural lashes are coated in glue. Oh, do I, I feel like I already, went over why that's not good, so I'm not gonna repeat myself, but you do not wanna coat anything in glue, let alone a cyanoacrylate-based adhesive that cures to a hard plastic. Who wants their eyelashes coated in plastic? I don't, I'm sure you don't, and apparently these people are encouraging that, so again, that's not the goal here. Set in the desired place and squeeze your lashes and extensions together with tweezers for 15 seconds with a steady grip. Now. You know, if, if you squeeze them together and you squeeze wrong or you pull too tight because you're, you're working with glue here, I would imagine that there's a chance that your lashes would potentially get pulled out. So, and then you're trying to do this with one eye because remember your eyes closed or maybe it's open. They, this graphic is, is open. So your eyes open, you're blinking, you're moving. To squeeze them and clamp them is not that easy. If you've used a lash curler, you know what I'm talking about. So they're just up in the ante, having to be with tweezers and glue. Okay, here we go. Step nine, all caps, note, important. Do not apply lashes directly on your eyes, eyelid, or skin. Now, so, the problem with that is that how, if you're not a professional, I mean, maybe, I don't wanna say that miracles don't happen, but if you're trying to go and apply this segment that's dripping, essentially with glue and you're swiping and you have your eye closed and you're looking and you're trying to go over your natural lashes like good luck trying to avoid getting it on your eyelid or your skin i think that's inevitable i'd love to see the amount of people that that's actually happening to um what that tells me here is that they are recognized they're recognizing that this product is is clearly professional grain isn't meant to go on the skin so that's just playing with fire in my opinion. There's a reason why strip lash adhesive is, is basically like a rubber and, and doesn't really cure fully and then it actually it gets all over your lashes, it just like glides off. Um, there's a reason for that. It's, it's harder than you think, ladies and gents. Um, step 10, all right, this is the finale here. Better be good. Repeat steps on opposite eye if you're not blind. Make sure your eyelashes are twins, not sisters. Oh. That's cute. A little styling tip. We're gonna do a style and a custom uh, design there. I doubt it. Um, that's another thing too, is that these lashes come as like a one size fits all. And unfortunately not all eyes are even. And sometimes you need different lengths and different curls to even things out. And it's, it's really hard to achieve symmetry when you have one eye closed. And, and again, you're just not being a professional. I think there's nothing wrong with not knowing how to do that. I think it's just harder. Um, and this makes it seem like it's very easy. So customize your look by choosing the number of segments used or stacking segments for more dramatic effects. Stacking, oh, oh, I'm sorry, oh my God. This is getting 
better or worse, I don't know. So stacking, um, my, my eyes are crying just listening to this. So stacking would be encouraging them to not only place one layer, but two layers on top at the same time. Now, I talked about wave earlier, and this is a wave disaster. So now they're, you're coating, you're dipping, there's segments all over the place. Your poor natural lash, go back to that little guy with the muscle. How's he doing now? Is he strong? I don't think he's that strong. So let's not stack anything for dramatic effect because you know it's gonna be dramatic your hair loss after from the damage is what I'm guessing. Um, this is cute though. Use our Nano Mister two minutes after application. Spraying on top of your lashes and gently underneath your lashes for 20 to 30 seconds. So that's legit. Um, it, you don't really have to wait two minutes. It's more around one, but that I do agree with. That is actually a professional technique that we use to, the reason why we use it is to limit the exposure to the vapors in the cyanoacrylate adhesive that they're now promoting for people to use with their eye open. So it really negates the entire purpose of the nano mister because your eye has been exposed aggressively the entire time. So that's um, good, but it's also, I don't know what good that does now if your eye has been open the whole time, but nano misting is a good thing. Let's get into, what do we got? removal. Let's talk about it. Step one, unscrew the cap, apply it under the remover bottle. Step two, dispense a small amount of remover gel into a smooth surface such as the lash tray. Step four, there's no step. There's no step three. So step three is call Lash Affair and book an appointment at the Lash Affair studio near you. I'm just kidding. I'm not Step four, all right, I don't know what step three is, but step four is using the applicator, apply an even coat of lash remover gel to the underside of the lashes. Wow. So they are saying to do it with the eye open. Um, just, I feel like this is really a dangerous thing to promote. I mean, you're coming at your eye with a remover. So now let's be clear about the, what the remover is there for. So with our professional grade products, which they are similar, they are cyanoacrylate based. They cure to a hard plastic, so water, oil, that nothing is going to take, you know, degrade that or take that off, right? You have to use remover. So remover is going to now liquefy the plastic and then, you know, dissolve it in that way. So it doesn't like vaporize it, it just turns it back into the, the liquid form. So you obviously need a very strong chemical to do that, to dissolve a plastic into the back into a liquid. So it seems a little obvious to me that you wouldn't want to do that with your eyeball open. I don't know. I don't know. I would say not do that. That seems a little dicey if you ask me. Step five, wait approximately one to two minutes for the remover gel to dissolve the glue, then gently pull the lash segments off with your tweezers. Do not use force to remove the lashes and do not could damage them. Oh, we're meant to some damage, are we? So this is good in, this, in the sense of that you do usually need to wait one to two minutes. Sometimes it's longer. I'm gonna guess that's gonna be longer if you're telling people to coat the whole lash, but that's not bad. I'm only just concerned with using the product that's really not designed to touch the skin on the, on the eye. Um, and yeah, you shouldn't pull them out. They should really slide right off. But then again, it's because that adhesive has dissolved and liquefied. Step six, after removing the lashes, she looks so happy. Well, <laughs> successfully, I love that you think they added that word in there. They just had to really make it firm. Wash your face immediately with water. I foam the lash one. Okay. It, I mean, you can draw your own conclusion with those tips that I just gave you, seeing what the remover gel is, how the product is working, and why you wouldn't want to have your eye open. So this seems very, um, very scary to me. Lash safety, important safety information. One, leave this website. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not what it says, but it should. Um, products are professional grade. Okay, there you go, right away. Products are professional grade. That should be a red flag. The products are labeled professional grade because they usually come with training to use them. That's why they're called professional grade. If it wasn't, it would be called OTC, over the counter, which requires not a lot of training, especially professional training. So 
just know that if you decide to, you know, roll the dice and use professional grade products, um, you could potentially not have the results that you're looking to get. Um, this is for you to be included up patient and carefully, which is not really helpful. Don't use if you suffer from impaired vision, poor hand-eye coordination, or trouble stabilizing your hand for any reason. So basically don't use lash art and lash artists is what I heard because <laughs> good lash artists have great vision, they have excellent hand-eye coordination, and they have really steady hands. So that's a lot to ask of a person when they're in the mirror, one eye is closed, they're using products that they're not familiar with, they cure very fast, um, cure meaning dry, they dry really fast, and you're using these tweezers, it's, it's very difficult. So that right, right there should tell you that it's difficult to do on yourself. Um, do not eat or drink, totally. Keep it your children, always. Do not use if you're allergic or sensitive to any of the ingredients, yes. Um, the, the thing is with that though, is that um, sometimes people can have sensitivities if the products touch their skin, which they're not designed to. So that could be a little misleading. And the proper way to use these products is using minimal amount of them. So in the event you use an excess amount, you could see some adverse reaction that typically might not be there. If, you know, the adhesive got into your eye and it was a large amount and you just were irritated. So be careful there. Six, exercise caution when handling tweezers. Um, yeah, they're very pointy, they're super sharp. Should really only be used by professionals. Be careful not to poke or jab your eyes with our tweezers. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so seven, please do not apply lashes in poor lighting or when, or when not completely focused on lash application. I think this whole thing is um, like putting lashes on in the dark with your fingers. That's what the results are gonna be like. Only apply while sober and focused. Oh, <laughs> I feel like this is great. Is this like supposed to be a joke? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that seems really like a great piece of recommendation, but I think that even if you are sober and focused, this is gonna be hard. Wow, I can't believe that was actually like a safety. Um, use the priming glue and lash remover gel carefully and avoid contact with your eyes. If you actually get in your eye, flush it with a water and seek medical assistance. So that one is right there. Number nine, that's a stinger. So it's telling you if, you if you accidentally get any on your eyes, the remover gel or the primer, you have to just flush with water and seek medical assistance. Like, who wants to risk that? I feel like that seems not like a win-win if you're just trying to do it to save time and money. Now you got to go to the doctor because you got your eyeball damaged. I don't know. I think we can do better. All right. Ten. Lash extensions are applied to lashes only. Please do not apply to your eyelids. Well, since you said please, that definitely makes a difference or to any surrounding skin. So they're not meant to touch the skin. I reiterate that. Our priming glue and lash gel are designed to be used only on the hairs of your lashes. Okay, you just said that, and also by professionals. That's what that sentence should be finished with. Use the included lashes, priming gel, and lash removal gel as intended. Do not use it the lashes, glues, or solvents. Do not. Well, this would actually be a great system if they had a latex glue. So I'm re I'm recommending that you use it with another glue. That would be my my go-to here. Um, 12, please do not pick a bullet tongue at the lashes on supply. Totally don't do that. Regardless of what lashes you have on, it's not cool. Dispose of any remaining primer glue lash remover gel 30 days after opening. Okay, that's not so bad. This says, um, add home lash extensions last 10 plus days, 100% waterproof, easy application of removal. Now, easy? What do you think hard is? I wanna know. How'd you gauge that? Easy. I saw these little trickery videos and they're just sliding them on no problem. Like, let's show a real person doing it. From the ones I've seen, they're not describing it as easy. The professionals usually don't apply extensions on themselves because it's hard and they know that. Even the professionals don't do that to themselves. That should be a, a sign right there. Everybody that I know that does lashes does not do them on themselves. They have another qualified person to do them for them. Because that's what you do. Um, but easy, I just feel like that's really strange. Um, but so they're encouraging you to keep them on 
for 10 plus days with the glue coated up onto the lashes. Now, with the way the hair cycle, like they grow and how it works, I would imagine that from that initial application, there's going to be all of the baby hairs, which are called antigen hairs. Those are really, really, sometimes clear. It's really hard to even see them, but those are the lashes within the next couple of weeks are gonna be longer and so the cycle continues. So you have to let the babies grow and be strong. So I'm gathering from this system, that whole segment is gonna get in there and just completely latch onto those babies because of all of that glue that's being used. So when you think about the lashes being on there for 10 days, they're gonna to continue to grow and just pull and that's gonna be painful. And something I really important that we should touch on is that what happens when the lashes go through that sort of trauma? There's a condition called traction alopecia that you can get from when the lashes are damaged in a certain phase, which is that antigen phase. If they are pulled on, tugged out, that sort of pressure, that sort of damage becomes permanent and permanent meaning you will not grow hairs in that hair follicle anymore. So the longer that this sort of reckless application or this process is happening to you, the more and more times that you're likely to experience that. And you know, you wear them for a year straight and you might have a really, really sad lash line with minimal lashes and it's sometimes irreparable. So you only have one set of eyes and I know that seems pretty you know obvious to say but this seems to be a popular um, technique that people are falling for and I think it's really important that we spread information that people can really decide whether or not that this is safe for them so hopefully people will reassess um, whether or not they want to participate in a uh, at home service that seems to be, seems to me very unsafe. So um, let's see, we want to go to the FAQ. What are like self-applied eyelash extensions? Self-applied eyelash extensions is an exclusive design only available from this company. This invention, invention. No, this is not an invention, this is reckless. This makes me sad that you're setting other women and men up for a bad time. And I feel like the people that are seeking to get these DIY lashes, you're, you're, you're already saying to yourself that you don't like the look of your eyes without lashes. So how is that gonna make you feel when this type of technique will literally take what you already have away? And then I don't see how you live knowing that having lashes that's the saddest thing I've ever heard so I think we really need to think about the long-term effects of these things because they can be permanent so sorry I just got off the tangent it makes me upset it's not an invention um it's lazy this, this is lashes with no training that's what that is it's not an invention um okay um consist of a five fan segment that are easily applied to the actual lashes the same way professional lash artists and salons apply individual extensions to their client. The same way, the same way, the same way. That's it, the same way. That everything about this technique is actually the opposite of how professionals apply lash extensions. There is isolation, there is minimal adhesive, there is clean, you know, if, if it is a fan, it's not this chunk that's like distributing adhesive all the way up the lashes. It's, it's actually quite the opposite. Um, and if you haven't had professional lash extensions, maybe you wouldn't know that, but it truly is a relaxing, comfortable, pain-free service that really is enjoyable and leaves you feeling great, no damage, or um, really ever if you go to something that does um, nice, healthy, professional, lash extension so um so they say same thing same way that salons apply individual lashes to their clientele without spending hours of time and large sums of money never before has diy system has a diy system at home offered anything beyond the typical lash strips that must be removed daily with these extensions you could apply your look in just five minutes and wear your lashes for 10 days now 
they say that you, you're you're saving money in time. Now, from what I've gathered, this is not fast. People in the videos have, have spent close to 30 minutes on one eye because it's rather frustrating because to getting the lashes to stay and actually stay on, it, it's it's not easy. Um, if you do five minutes, I don't, I, you know, that's great, but I question how much adhesive is on there. And like I said, it's not safe for that amount of product if it's attached to that many lashes to be on there for 10 days, let alone, let alone one day. Okay, this is a bold, this might be the boldest. Will these extensions damage my natural lashes? No, it says no, period. No other words, no, period. Now, if you're unsure of how lash damage is caused, it's from damaging, I mean, it can be caused in several ways, but this specifically would be damaging because they're gonna to be too heavy and they're gonna be damaging those antigen hairs, which are those baby hairs and pulling them out and just causing that extra weight and causing them to grow down, essentially pulling them out and really disrupting the natural growth cycle of the lashes, which is damaging. Um, but these, these are specifically designed to ensure lashes are not damaged during application or removal. So, but how, how so though? I, I, the whole entire technique is, is literally created to damage your lashes. Um, unique part right here, to gently use up while remaining in an intact for 10 minutes. Okay. So this is interesting. If you've ever tried professional lash extensions applied in the salon, you'll know that dry split or broken, dry split or broken lashes are all too common side effect for temporary beauty. So it's just ironic that you would describe that as the effect of salon lashes when in actuality, if you're coating the glue all the way up the lash and sticking this large segment, sometimes stack them, that is going to lead to broken lashes, split, dry lashes. That is exactly how that will happen. Not from professionally taking an extension and gently applying it to the base with minimal product and minimal weight from the lashes themselves. I feel like you guys can do the math and come to your own conclusion on that. Um, but yeah, those are that is a side effect. Lashes can be repaired, but it depends on what kind of damage it is. So, of course, do we have serums and, you know, all sorts of vitamins, peptides, and products that we can use? That's fine. That can actually really be helpful if you needed a little bit of a rehab. But if you have a certain type of damage and you get into that traction alopecia, that is when that is not repairable. So, it's it really depends on how the damage was caused. Um, in the salon model, several lashes are applied to one individual natural lash, resulting in a heavier load that ultimately breaks the natural lash. So what I don't understand is that that's exactly what this product does. It is heavy just by design with the way that it looks. I mean, we could pop up, I think we should actually just pop up a photo of the cluster versus a lash fan and just visually looking at it. You can tell which one is heavier. It doesn't take um, a professional to recognize the difference between the two. So that's pretty self-explanatory just looking at it. Um, so yeah, they're even admitting here that having your load will ultimately break the natural lashes. So they really just said it themselves. So that's fine. Um, the five fan segment distribute weight more evenly by adhering to several natural lashes, reducing the risk of damage. So now that is exactly the opposite of what they teach you in professional settings, you only want to apply one lash, regardless if it's a classic, meaning one extension or, or a fan, to one natural lash, due to the fact that all the or all the, yeah, all the natural lashes grow in a different growth rate, like meaning the cycle, so maybe this one's ready to fall off and this one's the baby. So you have to let them do their thing naturally. Once you disrupt that, that's when damage comes. So if this, you know, situation is encouraging you to stick segment on several natural lashes that contradicts everything that I just said. So now you have natural lashes being pulled out when they're not, or, you know, they're not ready to come out. They're being pulled out. Lashes are too long. They're just being stuck together. That has disaster written all over it. So I'm going to take a hard pass on that. Is, uh, next question is, is the eyelash glue safe for my sensitive eyes? Let's see. 
This glue is sensitive and it was formulated for individuals with sensitive eyes. It is safe even for those that wear contact lenses. Okay, thanks for bringing that up. So there's nowhere in here that says that you should move their, your contact lenses. So I guess that depends on what kind of contact. So hard lenses are um, like more of a hard, actual hard lens, not a lot of water, but if you have soft contact lenses, those are primarily water. So what's gonna happen when that adhesive gets around that area, it's going to dry out the contact, leaving it very uncomfortable. Um, if you wear contacts, you know what I'm talking about when that gets dry. Um, unlike other brands that sell strip lashes that can be applied at home, our lash glue will not come in contact with your eyes or your delicate eyelid skin. How, how though? It's that that's from that's solely based on the application process, not the product itself. It's the person applying them. So professionals understand how um, adhesive control works and how to isolate properly. Where if you're just kind of winging it and you're just looking for a night in the town and you just grab this kit. You're not going to know all these things, I'm sure, and you can't guarantee that that person's not going to get it on their skin. So that's what they would say. Um, this extension glue is applied to the band of the lashes, then applied to your natural lashes. So there, the band—that's that key, that key word here. So that band is what's holding all of those lashes together. Now that also makes sure that the adhesive gets on there. It's usually flat, goes right across, and is essentially designed to contour the lid skin. That's like where it rests on, how strip lashes are designed. So that's interesting. Um, so, so, this last banger, this is about last statement here. So the studies show this glue is up to 10 times more gentle than salon formulas. I don't see a study linked. I would love to see said study. Um, I don't know how you could have a cyanoacrylate based adhesive, and, but also be 10 times more gentle. Professional grade products are considerably gentle. Um, they're, they're not industrial strength. They, if, they, if they're used properly, clients shouldn't have any sensitivities at all. So I would love to see this study. I feel like, I don't know. <laughs> this has been very taxing to read for me. Not a hater, really I'm not. I respect people that want to try to make a business and they want to help other women, and etc., etc. What I have a problem with, and what everybody should have a problem with, is just false claims of comfort and, you know, basically saying that everything that we do as a service is damaging. When in actuality, it's you're describing your process. So I don't. That is what I have a problem with. I think people need to have accurate information and you guys can make your own decisions. So it may be this works for you, but just be aware that if you are not treating your lash line with respect, trust me, it will it will bounce. She'll she'll give up, she'll leave, and she'll she won't be feeling the love and she will stop growing back. Um, one thing I can I can sort of explain it like is um, if you've ever had waxing, you know in your legs or your bikini or any anywhere even your brows i feel like brows might be a little bit different because sometimes people have stubborn brows but if you wax something you know repeatedly over time what happens the hair grows back thinner finer sometimes not at all because it's being ripped and damaged when it's in the root so similar it's not the same type of hair but it's very similar in the way that it can be damaged so just take care of yourselves please and your eyes and make sure that if you have any questions about any of these at home sort of kits, you know, feel free to hit us up. We'll be happy to start a conversation. So seeing that this is definitely a popular topic online, and I think there's a lot more discussion, there's a lot more companies, there's a lot more um, YouTube videos, a lot more things that we can review and spark up more conversation. I have a couple guests that I want to bring on to talk about some of these at home kits. And we actually want to continue this series and maybe practice, you know, using some of these things. And so you guys can see um, some professionals using them on each other and get some honest reactions to how this really is to not be fooled by advertising. So stay tuned for more on DIY lashes. Thank you.